linguistic imperialism is another important uh, socio-political aspect of English language teaching. As we know and we have discussed in other modules as well that English assumes a lot of socio-political power in the societies where it is being taught as a second or foreign language. In such situations, uh, some people and researchers believe that uh, this language exerts its, uh, its power as well as its speakers, native speakers power over others and the values and the language itself. And, uh, and the various uh, values and social aspects associated with the language are considered to be superior than those which are followed by uh, the speakers of local languages in those societies. So this language and its spread and its teaching in ELT classrooms not only manif manifests the knowledge of a second uh, important language but also shows the power uh, of the powerful people who who have ruled the world and who still dominate uh, the thinking of the people living in ESL or EFL societies. Uh, this is the basic concept behind linguistic imperialism that through language uh, the nations uh, or the speakers of, of, of a powerful language like English they dominate the minds of uh, its learners in various contexts. Let's try to see what linguistic uh, materialism or linguistic imperialism is. It, it may be seen as a transfer of dominant language and its aspects uh, to the speakers of other languages. For example, uh, the transfer of aspects of English uh, to the speakers of Urdu or other local languages in Pakistan. As we know, English assumes a lot of symbolic and social power in Pakistani society and uh, since we have a colonial history as well. So, uh, and, and that is the British uh, colonialism, which is an English-speaking country. So, this language still is deeply rooted in, in our official and political circles, uh, also in academic circles. So, many people believe uh, that this language dominates uh, dominates uh, other languages and, they do, and it, has, it has not allowed other languages to be used in various official domains. And it has influenced the thinking patterns of uh, various people, especially the powerful elite, which uses this language uh, to dominate over other classes. Uh, to put it in simple words, that the elite in the bureaucratic or social circles of Pakistani societies uses this language to dominate uh, other classes in the society. So they are not ready to uh, leave this language and they, they promote this language in a systematic way. So linguistic imperialism believes uh, in, in such theories that a powerful language is systematically used to influence the thinking patterns of less powerful people. Linguistic uh, imperialism is not uh, reduced to cultures spheres only but it also includes ideological, social, political and econom economic practices in a society. For example, in Pakistan English is not only uh, a language, a foreign or second language, it is a passport to success. Therefore, a lot of economic benefits are associated or systematically attached with this language and this could be seen as one of uh, the symbols of uh, linguistic imperialism in Pakistani society. Uh, to Philipson, who has been an important figure in, in promoting the concept of linguistic imperialism uh, by opposing it ideologically. He has been a strong crit uh, critic and he, he has created a lot of awareness among various uh, second and foreign la language learners about the linguistic imperiali imperialistic designs of uh, various notions, especially in the areas of uh, Africa and Asia. He says that linguistic imperialism assumes the active promotion of the language by the dominant class as an active expression of power. Uh, of the powerful or the over the powerless. I mean, a dominant language belonging to powerful people uh, 
dominating over the less powerful or powerless people. So it is a clear expression of power. And I've already given an example from Pakistani context. English uh, as a language is also closely related to cultural imperialism, which means one culture dominates other cultures. Uh, many people in various societies are influenced by the Western culture, and Western culture is transmitted to to rest of the world through English language. Now we have been made to believe that their culture is superior, uh, their way of thinking is superior, they are scientifically, technologically advanced, and uh, most of the knowledge in the world is available in Eng English language only. This is, to some extent, is, is a reality. But we also need to know that when we start believing in this, we, we stop thinking about the alternatives. So we should also think about the alternatives. When we are fixed to this superiority uh, of English language, then we might be a prey to linguistic imperialism. Uh, linguistic imperialism is also concerned with uh, the linguistic hierarchies of various uh, so, uh, societies, especially in multilingual societies, how various languages are uh, prioritized on those societies. Uh, if the language of the powerful is given priority, for example, English language, then and the local languages are ignored uh, clearly, then there might be some traces of linguistic imperialism in those societies. It also addresses the issues of uh, why some languages come to be used more uh, and others less. And it also studies what structures and I ideologies facilitate such pro uh, processes, which assigns powerful roles to one language and powerless roles to other languages and their speakers. Uh, linguistic imperialism can be uh, can be open or can function in a secret way. Open when a powerful uh, society or community uh, conquers another society or community and uh, makes them believe that their language is superior and it should be used in all socio-political functions. Uh, and it could work uh, in a covert manner as well, in a secret manner, when there is no physical control over a community, but that community is made to believe psychologically and that their own languages are less powerful uh, and are of little or no value as compa compared to a strong, powerful uh, foreign language. For example, English in many post-colonial societies is still believed to be a powerful language and, the, and a passport to success. Uh, therefore, uh, they, there may not be a physical control in, in these societies of English-speaking people, but there is still a psychological imperialistic control on these societies. Uh, through And language, English language, has a vital role in such a domination. It can take place consciously and unconsciously, uh, but the end result always reflect uh, hegemonic beliefs, dominant uh, attitudes and values. Yes, linguistic imperialism may function uh, consciously, unconsciously, may be open or secret, but it definitely is related to the belief that one language, powerful language, is superior uh, than other languages, which would be systematically reduced to inferior functions in a society.